When we think about the structure and function of bone in response, as it responds to load, one of the important things that we need to consider is bone mineral density. Here's a micrograph of healthy bone taken from three different locations in the human body. You can see this is all cancellous bone. It's all the spongy bone that we talked about in the first bone video. And you can see that it's got this porous network or mesh that characterizes how it is. And it's different densities in different places in the body, uh, but there's some, some black spaces that are air holes and some or that are holes and some spaces that are filled with tissue. And if you were to do a three-dimensional rendering of that, it would look something like this. You can see that there's kind of a network of plates that are flat, maybe saddle shaped a little bit, and rods that connect the plates together that we were talking that we talked about when we talked about the structure of bone in the first video. There's a medical condition called osteoporosis that has or cantellus bone that looks like this. You'll see right away, comparing the two pictures, that the cantellus bone has a lot bigger gaps in it compared to the healthy bone. And if you were to do a three-dimensional rendering of the bone, it would have these spindle-shaped uh, rods connecting the plates, and the plates themselves get pretty thin and very brittle looking, very spindly looking, osteoporosis. And this is a really big problem mechanically. This graph shows on the horizontal axis the apparent density, and on the vertical axis the elastic modulus, both as a log-log, or both on logarithmic scales. So this is a log-log plot. And uh, the apparent density is the tissue mass divided by the bulk volume. And what we mean when we say bulk volume here is that it includes both the solid and the void components. So those empty spaces as well as the solid components. And you can see that there's a power law between these. It's a power law because this is a log-log plot and you've got a straight line on the log-log plot. So this is a power law where the elastic modulus E is directly proportional to the apparent density of the bone. Though there is that knee at about 1.2 uh, grams per cubic centimeter for the apparent density. So between or below 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter, that power law is characterized by a coefficient of 2.5, and above 1.2 grams per cubic centimeter, it's characterized by a coefficient of about 3.2. So you can see that the more dense your bone is, the stiffer your bone is, and there's kind of that critical point right there at rho equals 1.2. Furthermore, if we consider the ultimate strength of bone in compression, uh, this is a graph of ultimate compressive strength on the vertical axis and relative density of bone specimens on the horizontal axis. And this is taken from a variety of different studies. You can see down there in the legend in very, very small font, the different studies that this is taken from. But you can see that there's a pretty clear relationship between the different uh, two parameters, the relative density and the relative compressive strength. So you can characterize this mathematically. The ultimate strength is equal to a constant 68 times the strain to raised to the point 0.086 times the density squared. So ultimate strength depends on the apparent density. And the squared relationship means that bone mineral loss has significant effects on the strength of the bone. You also find it looking at bone density and ultimate strength relationships that bone ultimate strength depends on the strain rate of the bone. And that happens because bone is a viscoelastic tissue. It is, its loading is rate dependent and history dependent. So given that this is such an important character, characterization property, the relative density has such a strong relationship between both the modulus and the ultimate strength of the bone, it would be really useful to be able to estimate this in living people so that you can make an estimate of their bone health because that tells you a lot about their risk of injury due to certain activities. So that's where something called the DEXA scan comes in. The DEXA scan is the gold standard clinical tool for estimating bone mineral density or BMD and it uses x-ray technology. So the same kinds of x-rays that you would get if you broke your arm and you went into the emergency department and had an x-ray to see where the, it was broken. Um, the same idea. An x-ray uses light from the electromagnetic spectrum to make an image of the body. And we use the electromagnetic spectrum all the time. It's all over the place. It's all around us all the time. Different ways that you've probably used it 
recently in the last week are listening to the radio, maybe in your car, uh, microwaving food in a microwave oven, uh, looking at people or things or this computer screen right now where you're using the visible light portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, it's all around us and we use it all the time. In x-ray imaging, we use a particular portion of it uh, up here in the x-ray spectrum where the wavelength is very, very small. And uh, the interesting thing about the body is that the body allows through some wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum and it blocks others. In particular, it blocks the visible wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. That's why you're visible. Um, in the x-ray portion of the spectrum, it allows through some of the wave, but not all of the wave. And that actually is really useful and it is dependent on where in the wavelength you are, or where in the spectrum you are. Because um, at lower wavelengths it will allow through less than at higher wavelengths or shorter wavelengths. Um, so it's useful because you can take multiple images with multiple wavelengths and get information, combine those two images to get information about the bone mineral density. So clinically, when you do a DEXA scan, you'll get results that look like these two pictures right here, where you have on the left a DEXA scan for a 68-year-old woman, and on the right a DEXA scan for a 74-year-old woman. And you can see down here in the lower left you have this green region that's normal. That means normal bone mineral density or normal bone health. An osteopenia region, which is where you have, uh, you're on the border of osteoporosis, and then this red region, that's the osteoporosis region. And then these curves that go across the uh, graph are the normal, the middle line is kind of the 50th percentile for the age range, and then um, confidence intervals on that on either side of it. So you can see that the 68-year-old woman falls within a slightly on the higher side of her uh, age range in terms of a normal distribution, but falls within the normal uh, bone mineral density range. So she's healthy. The 74 year old woman on the right hand side over here uh, falls both outside her normal distribution for her age range and in the osteoporosis region. So in terms of diagnosis, what matters is whether you fall in the osteoporosis region or not. Uh, the interesting thing to note about the normal distribution for an age range is that if you look at uh, the women here, the older women, kind of above the age of about 85, almost all women will fall within a range of osteopenia to osteoporosis. Um, and that's true for women more so than men. Men also uh, lose bone mineral density as they get older, uh, but it affects women much, much more strongly. It's believed that that's a result of some of the hormones of menopause and that that's related to um, that process. So um, the DEXA scan is how you get bone mineral density information out of living, living people. There's also an ultrasound technique that's sometimes used to do a DEXA scan or to get bone mineral density information that doesn't involve the harmful radiation of a DEXA scan. But if you're at a high risk for um, falls and fractures due to falls, it's important to know kind of your bone health uh, in the older population because bone mineral density is so closely tied to both the elastic modulus and the ultimate strength of the bone.